Hello everyone, my name is Halvi. In this video, I'll be explaining the lore of the continent of Alib. Alib is the continent that the Fire Emblem games of The Binding Blade and The Blazing Blade take place upon. This continent consists of five countries and three other regions. Alib features various terrains and climates, ranging from cold snowy wastelands to vast wide open grassy plains to rugged mountains to dry sandy deserts. Burn was founded by Hartmut the Hero, leader of the Eight Legends. It is ruled by a royal family and has one of the largest and most powerful military forces on the continent. Wyverns are native to this country. The Fire Emblem is Burn's national treasure. Ichuria was founded by Saint Elamine, one of the Eight Legends. It is ruled by a royal family and is one of the largest nations and home to the most advanced civilization on the continent. Its Military strength rivals that of Burns. The most popular religion, the St. Elamine Church, is based in this country. Lycia was founded by Roland the Champion, one of the eight legends. It is made up of many smaller territories, each ruled by a Marquis that formed the Lycian League. Ostia is the most powerful territory and stands as the head of the League. Ilia was founded by Baragon, the Holy Knight, one of the eight legends. It is a snow wasteland which makes farming near impossible so most of its people become mercenaries to support their families. These mercenaries are known to be very loyal to their employers. Pegasi are native to this country and only allow women to ride them. Sake was founded by Hanan, the Divine Trooper, one of the eight legends. It features wide open fields and is home to many nomads and myrmidons who belong to one of three main tribes, the Kutala, the Jutes, or the Lorca, the Western Isles is a region settled by barbarian clans under Durban the Berserker, one of the eight legends. These islands are rich in minerals and other resources, although this results in piracy and banditry being commonplace. Nabata is a desert wasteland region. It is where Athos of the Eight Legends took refuge and discovered the secret village of Arcadia where dragons and humans coexist in peace. Valor, also known as the Dread Isle, is a secluded island to the south of Lycia. It is home to many ancient ruins, including the Dragon's Gate, and it was here that Bramamond of the Eight Legends sacrificed their humanity to obtain tremendous dark magical power. The history of Elib stretches well over 1,000 years. In the beginning, humans and dragons shared the continent and lived together in peace. This peace lasted many generations until one day, mankind attacked the dragons. Man and dragon fought in a savage war known as the Scouring. The war eventually came to a stalemate as the dragons had superior strength and defense and the humans dominated in terms of sheer numbers. No matter how many humans the dragons killed, more and more appeared and the humans' weapons could not pierce the rock-hard scales of the dragons. Both sides needed a new strategy if either side were to ever budge. The fire dragons requested help from the divine dragons, but they were denied and the divine dragons vanished without explanation. However, one divine dragon was hesitant to follow the others and was left behind. This dragon was Edu. The fire dragons were able to capture Edun and ordered her to aid them by making war dragons so that they could keep up with the humans' increasing numbers. Edun refused and the fire dragons destroyed her soul, transforming her into a demon dragon and forced her to create the war dragons. In response to the demon dragon and war dragons, humanity created the legendary weapons, the Staff of the Saints and the Binding Blade. These incredibly powerful weapons 
weapons were given to the very strongest of humans, Hartmut, Roland, Durbin, Elamine, Baragon, Hennen, Bramamond, and Athos. These humans were deemed the Eight Generals. The Eight Generals confronted the dragons in the Dragon Sanctuary. The immense clash of power between the weapons and the dragons caused the ending winter, which warped the laws of nature. Snow began to fall in midsummer, and stars shone in the middle of the day. This dealt a fatal blow to the dragons as the weakened forces of nature made it very difficult for the dragons to retain their original dragon form. They were forced to seal their powers into dragon stones and take human form as manichaeids so that they could conserve energy. In manichaeid form, the dragons were severely weaker, weaker than humans even. The humans took advantage of this and mercilessly crushed the dragons in their human form. The eight generals killed the dragon's leader and confronted Idun. Hartmut attacked Idun but did not kill her as the binding blades sensed the pity that Hartmut felt for Idun. The attack only left her unconscious. The eight generals decided to seal Idun away in a temple using the binding blade and the fire emblem. The surviving dragons fled through the dragon's gate and one dragon named Jan, who was severely wounded, went into hiding within the dragon's sanctuary. Elsewhere, a sorcerer named Nurgle brought his half-dragon children, Ninian and Nils, to the dragon's gate. He left them there to look for his wife, their mother, the dragon Aenir, who was taken by some bad men. He never returned and the children passed through the dragon's gate. In the following years, the nations of Bern, Lycia, Etruria, and Ilia are founded and the Western Isles are settled by the eight generals. The Elamine Church is founded by Elamine. The legendary weapons are sealed away through multiple layers of physical and magical protection to prevent another disaster such as the eternal winter from happening again. Eventually, the eight generals die except for Athos and Bramamond. Centuries later, Athos met Nurgle wandering the Nevada desert. The two of them became friends and decided to travel together as they were both equals in terms of knowledge and power. In their travels, they discovered a village where dragons and humans coexisted in peace. They used their magical powers to create an oasis and a barrier to help and protect the village. They ended up calling the village Arcadia and lived there for quite some time, studying the dragon's language and knowledge. During their studies, Nurgle learned the art of harvesting quintessence, or life energy, from living beings and turning it into raw power. Due to the nature of dark magic, Nurgle's mind became corrupted and he only wanted to gain more and more power. And since harvesting quintessence involved taking the lives of the living, Athos and the other villagers tried to persuade Nurgle to stop but they ended up fighting and Nurgle was forced to flee. Nurgle hid out in burn and started creating morphs. Eventually, Nurgle began to enact the first stages of his grand scheme to bring dragons back to the continent and harvest their quintessence. He moved his base of operations to the dragon's gate on Valor. He called Ninian and Nils through the Dragon's Gate, who had to take on human form and put their powers into dragon stones. Nurgle took their stones and imprisoned them. He also sent the assassin Jafar and one of his morphs, Sonya, to infiltrate the Black Fang and turn them over to Nurgle's control so that he can use them to harvest quintessence. A short time later, Lin met the tactician Mark on the plains of Sakai and they set out on a journey. Lin found out about her true heritage as an heir to the Kaelin throne and was resolved to meet her grandfather. Along the way, she met many new allies, helped Ninian and Nils escape the Black Fang, and ultimately killed her granduncle Lundgren, who was trying to take Kaelin's throne by force. All within the following year, Lynn spent time with her grandfather. Darren, the Marquess of Laos, met Nurgle's morph Ephidel. Darren, who was very power hungry, was convinced by Ephidel to start a rebellion against Ostia. Darren then sent out a request for help to other 
Marquises, Helmen of Santa Ruz, and Elbert of Ferre respond to Darren's request, although Elbert actually traveled to Laos to try and convince Darren to stop the rebellion as it is foolish. Darren didn't listen and Ephidel noticed that Elbert and his knights possessed high quality quintessence, so Elbert ended up being taken to Nurgle on Valor. All contact with Elbert was lost and rumors of his death started going around, so Eliwood decided to leave Ferre and search for his father. Hector had the same idea and decided to leave Ostia to join Eliwood in his search. Eliwood, following his father's tracks, first arrived in Santa Ruz where Helmen told them to go to Laos. In Laos, they fought and defeated Eric and Darren fled to Caelan. They followed Darren into Caelan where they joined Lin's forces and forced Darren to retreat once again. This time he fled to Valor. Continuing to follow Darren's tracks, the lords met Fargus who gave them passage to Valor. They found Ninian drifting in the sea on their way. They fought their way to the Dragon's Gate and finally defeated Darren and met Nurgle. Ephidel and Elbert were then killed in a failed attempt by Nurgle to open the Dragon's Gate, but Elbert was able to wound Nurgle, forcing him to flee. The lords arrived back on the mainland and met with Hector's older brother, Marquis Uther of Ostia. He told the lords to search for Athos, the living legend. So they went to the Nabata Desert where Athos told them to go to the Shrine of Seals in Bern because it is there that they will find the power needed to defeat Nurgle. He then warped them back to Foray as it is the closest Lycian territory to Bern. In Bern, the lords had some run-ins with the Black Fang. They also got caught up in a plot by King Desmond to assassinate his son Zephiel as well as the theft of the Fire Emblem. At Queen Helen's request, they recovered the Fire Emblem and fought off Zephiel's assassins, saving his life. In return of the favor, Queen Helen gave them directions to the Shrine of Seals. At the Shrine of Seals, the lords met Bramamond, who approved of them and removed the seal placed on the legendary weapons. Then Eliwood, Hector, and Athos removed the Durandal, Armads, Fourblaze, and Oriola from their respective shrines in preparation for the final fight with Nurgle. Also during this time, Uther died from an illness. The final battle took place at the Dragon's Gate. After a hard-fought battle, Nurgle was killed, as well as three fire dragons that passed through the gate. Athos and Bramamond died after exhausting their last remaining strength. The legendary weapons were sealed away once again. Nils said his farewells and passed on to the other side of the gate and closed it for good. Eliwood and Hector ascended to become the Marquises of Foray and Ostia respectively. Fifteen years later, King Desmond of Bern was murdered by his son Zephiel. Zephiel became the new king of Bern, and one of his first actions as king was to break the seal over Edun. The breaking of the seal helped Jan recover from his wounds from 1,000 years ago, who then searched for the one who broke the seal and eventually found Zephiel. When asked for his intentions, Zephiel stated that he wanted to give the world to the dragons. Zephiel planned to do this by starting a war. Sakai and Ilya were his first victims and he was easily able to conquer them. His next target was Lycia. Eliwood took on an illness and so it was up to his son Roy to lead the fight against Burn. Roy's first destination was to Arafin in Lycia. Along the way, he met Burn's princess Guinevere, who had stolen the fire emblem and fled to Lycia in search of help to stop the war. Once Roy arrived, Burn's army had already attacked Arafin. Though Roy was able to retake the castle, he found Hector locked up in the dungeon, who was suffering from serious wounds and would not live for much longer. But before he died, Hector was able to tell Roy that Burn was using dragons and that he must now lead what remains of of Lycia's armies. Roy's next destination was to be Ostia, but along the way he had to deal with Eric of Laos and Wagner of Thria, who sided with Bern. Roy then arrived in Ostia and saved Melina from a rebellion. Afterwards, they decided to retrieve Durandal from a nearby cavern. While they were gone, however, Narshin and his forces invaded Ostia, but not for long as Mage General Cecilia and Knight General Percival of Etruria appeared and forced Narshin to leave. 
Roy made an alliance with Echuria, and in exchange for Lysias' protection, Roy was ordered by Echuria to go to the Western Isles to deal with their many bandit problems, and Guinevere was left in Cecilia's care. In the Western Isles, Roy learned that there was some corruption going on, and Echurian nobles were behind the bandit attacks. Roy joined the local resistance and defeated the head of the corruption, and before departing the islands, he obtained Armads. Once back on the mainland, Roy is informed that Echuria's king has been overthrown by Rortz and Accard, and they handed over Echuria to burn. Cecilia was forced to escape with Guinevere, but King Zephyo himself severely wounds her and captures Guinevere. Zephyo was careless though, and Guinevere ended up back with Roy and the Lycian army. Roy rescues Arcadia in the Nabata Desert and obtained Fourblaze. Roy then led his army to liberate Echuria's capital, and he obtained Oriola. Roy and his army continued to free the rest of the continent from Burn's control, and the time came to invade Burn itself. He gathered the legendary weapons Merglis and Maltet and the Saint Staff and launched his attack. Roy's army fought a difficult battle near the Shrine of Seals, where he defeated the Wyvern generals. Murdoch and Gale. Deep within the shrine, Roy found the Apocalypse Tome, and back on the surface at the altar, Roy used the Fire Emblem to unseal and wield the Binding Blade. It was now time to assault Burn's capital. Roy made his way into the throne room and killed Zephyo. Roy then made his way to the Dragon Temple to stop Edun, who continued to carry out Zephyo's orders even after his death. Brunia awaited outside of the temple and Yawn inside, but neither of them could stop Roy's army. Roy finally confronted Edun. He used the Binding Blade to strike her down. She was transformed back into her human form and was left unconscious, and the Dragon Temple fell to pieces. The world was at peace once more. Guinevere became the new ruler of Burn. Lelina led the Lycian League, and Elfin returned to Echuria. Idun was taken to Arcadia, where hopefully her soul will be restored. And that is all I have to say. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.